In this episode of the podcast, our interview of the week is with Heath Paget. Heath is a serial entrepreneur who, with his wife, Alyssa, has been pretty much a full-time RVer for the past uh, five years. Well, their world changed a whole bunch about six months ago with the birth of their baby daughter, Ellie. And now the question is, is what's it like to RV with an infant? That's what we're going to talk to Heath about, as well as many of his entrepreneurial ideas. We'll have links in the description below. Uh, but I think you're going to find this a very interesting conversation. Uh, Heath is uh, a young uh, RV entrepreneur. We're going to talk about uh, earning a living on the road uh, while you're taking a baby with you on your RV travels. And we're going to talk about an event coming up in March called the RV Entrepreneur Summit that I think you'll be interested in as well. So uh, let's uh, tune in to Heath Badgett and our interview of the week. Well, joining us right now is Heath Paget. Good day, Heath. How are you doing? Good morning, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me again. We're recording this uh, bright and early for both of us. It turns out <laughs> we're both early risers, so this is good, right? I'm kind of early riser as a default, even if I wasn't before, because now I have a six-month-old daughter, and so <laughs> she, you kind of have to just be up when she's up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do, do you, I, I jump into that. Do you have like a morning routine? Do you get up uh, regularly every morning? I've always found that's the best way to get the day done. Yeah, I, in an ideal, I would say that anybody probably who has went through the newborn process, like any morning routine that I had before is thrown out the window. But there, I guess there's a, cute, a few things that I've done every morning since we started traveling in 2014, which is I journal, I drink at least probably two cups of coffee, <laughs> and I, I try to read Although this year I've gotten away from like reading in the morning. I'll typically read like um, nonfiction in the morning. So like something, whether it's like a business book or just like a, kind of a book that makes, that challenges me in a, in a way. So that's usually like my ramp up morning routine. And then I get into it. In the ideal world, there'd be exercise in there. But I'm just being honest that it hasn't looked like that. But at one point I'd like to get more exercise integrated. Alyssa and I go on a walk every morning, so I guess that's a light exercise, but nothing crazy. Well, you're moving and, uh, and yeah. fortunately you're young and you, you, you know that you'll be chasing around little Ellie soon enough. Uh, it, it sounds like you read uh, Hal Elrod's book, uh, The Power of Morning Routine, because that's pretty much what I do as well. And I'm surprised at how effective journaling is to, uh, to get you started. I, yeah, I, I did read it a few years ago, like after we started traveling. I don't, I know that it kind of was the book, to, it's called The 5 a.m. Morning Miracle or something like that, or The Morning yeah, Miracle. The, mor the Morning Miracle. Yeah, yeah so it, it was good. Uh, I fortunately started journaling before that. I think journaling is one of those things that people love to talk about doing, but I use a program called OneNote, and it's, even though I'm on a Mac user, it's actually a, one of the few PC programs that I still use just because I like the layout of it. It kind of looks like a tabular notebook. Um, but it's cool because I can, I just journal every morning and I put the date and the time, like I do an automatic timestamp type of thing. And then I put like a headline for that day, like I'm writing a blog post or something. And so the fun part about that has been once it kind of was created as a habit, I can look back on our travels from three or four years ago and see like, what was I doing today and this morning and kind of look at things that I've struggled with over time or, you know, the highlights of the past few years, then it's all kind of recorded. Otherwise you, you just forget. You do. You do indeed. And uh, I, I've found the same basic uh, thing. Well, hey, we're getting off topic here, but Sorry. I know a lot of people love to talk about all this stuff about how everybody gets going. But we want to talk about RVing with um, an infant, um, soon to be a toddler. Uh, Ellie is six months old now? Correct. That's right. Uh, so you guys, uh, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about traveling full-time in an RV uh, at a young age in just a minute, but let's, let's offer up, how did Ellie change everything in the RV for you guys? So we, I guess for context, Alyssa and I traveled for full-time for almost five years. And then when we got pregnant last year, we decided to not stay full-time on the road in an RV. So we got an apartment outside of Dallas this past year. And a lot of families do make the transition to parenthood uh, in staying in the RV. And that's totally cool. My wife was really sick at the time. Every time I made things like Brussels sprouts or walked around the RV, she was just nauseous. And she was like, I want a bath. I want some room. So we're like, let's go be near family, be in one place and just like make this transition to parenthood uh, in a little bit more room. And so that was what we did the past year. Although 
by the time Ellie was like four weeks old, we realized, hey, like we've got this parent thing down. She's four weeks old already. Like we took our first road trip to Colorado. And then last month, we actually spent the whole month in a motorhome. Well, most of the month in a motorhome over in Italy with her. And so that was kind of our first foray into RVing with a baby. And it was totally different. And it was in about the same size rig as you currently have now. It was like 23, 24 foot. And that's where we spent most of our time the past 18 months. We're in rigs of that size. We had a wonder for a little while. We're in New Zealand in a 24 foot camper van. And then in Italy, it was kind of about the same size because you don't have big rigs over there. So it was was definitely a different uh, experience as far as like, it was for us, it was kind of like, here is the beta, the the test trip to see like how it goes for us traveling with a baby and and see if it's something we want to continue doing moving forward because we didn't know. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of young, young people are thinking about going out and traveling young families and they say, oh, the kids are too young, the baby, I've got a baby. Uh, tell us w- how it's done. What are the changes you have to make? What are the challenges you face? And, uh, and how did you ultimately decide that this works and it works well? So I would say that there are like a million other families who are way more qualified to talk about this than me because we've only done it for a month. But I think <clears throat> the encouraging thing was that Whenever Alyssa and I started traveling, we were newlyweds. And a lot of people, whenever they looked at us and the fact that we were a little bit younger and things like that, they basically said, get it out of your system before you have kids. And I understood where they're coming from. I didn't give it much thought. But then when we got pregnant, I was like, wait, does that necessarily, that does, does that mean our travel is over? Like, is is it done? And so, and we didn't believe that, but it was just something that so many people said to us over the past few years. And so whenever we had Ellie, we were like, hey, she's here. And we also still can work from anywhere. And we still have a lot of places on our list that we want to go see. So instead of just saying, like, we're going to buy another rig here in the States immediately, uh, we're, we, there were, we wanted to go travel internationally because that's been a lot of the higher ups on our list of places we wanted to go visit. We wanted to go to Italy. And so basically, we're like, let's go do a test trip in an RV with her and just see how she does. Because it's one of those things that if she didn't respond well to being on the road, I don't even know what that would have looked like. Maybe she cried the whole time. Maybe we just felt like she hated it. Then we didn't, we didn't want to make that decision if it wasn't best for our family. So we went over there and uh, actually a lot of the people who we kind of like, when we put it out there on social media, people were really <clears throat> supportive uh, versus like before we felt like people were not support. I was like scared to tell people we were traveling with our a uh, four to five month old baby because they would judge us or something. But so many people reached out and were like, I travel with my kids during that time. And it was an amazing time because you can strap them on your chest. You can go explore. You can do everything you need to do. And they're just happy if they're with you. And obviously they're not going to remember any of it, but it's not necessarily about them. It's about like you're doing, you're continuing to live the, your life and now you're bringing another teammate along for the ride. And so that's kind of how we approached it. When we got over there, uh, we immediately picked up our camp, our motorhome in outside of Venice, and we drove to the northern Italian Dol- Dolomites. And the first like stretch of the road, I was driving a manual motorhome, and a lot of them are manual in Italy, and I've never driven a manual really before in my life. <laughs> so it's like learning how to drive a manual. And luckily, she slept like the first stretch of our trip uh, to get into the first Campeggio, which is what they call campgrounds in Italy. And um, and yeah, and then for the rest of the trip, it was, it was really just a matter for her at that age to, for us to navigate around her nap. So we realized like, hey, she's going to wake up in the morning, she'll hang out, she'll, she'll poop, she'll eat. And then like at a certain point, she'll get tired. And that's a good time for us to, to hit the auto strata, uh, the major highway in Italy and go travel for a few hours. And then we'll stop and we'll go to like a castle or something like that. So it was, it was really just a matter of timing it with her naps. And then when she'd wake up and we'd be exploring, she, she loved it. And there were days where we were out all day. But um, it, for us, at the kind of the key takeaway from what you were asking was, I guess we realized that it was totally possible and doable that we could continue living uh, our traveling lifestyle with, uh, with a little one. And uh, there's just more things that we have to be intentional about. But I think that was kind of the key takeaway from us after doing that for a month in Italy. And it could totally change. But at this point, that's kind of where we're at. So you're back in the States and uh, Ellie's now six months old. Those nap times will kind of move out uh, and change a little bit. Um, tell us about your RV plans for uh, 2020. Yeah, so we're picking, we're going like, the, I was talking with you about this yesterday. We're picking up like, we're going the polar opposite way from most people. Most people talk about like they buy a big rig and then they downsize. And that's kind of what we did for a couple of years. And then the, the other thing that we realized being in like a 24 foot rig with a baby was we didn't have anywhere to put her like during the day. So if, if we wanted her to like roll around and get tummy time and things like that, you kind of have to like be there on the bed with her and kind of like 
monitor and keep her contained yeah. so she doesn't fall off the rear twin bed and then or she's like in her car seat ideally we could like put her in a little, a little area outside with her bed that we brought but you know weather pending it's it was cold so we basically realized that we didn't want to be in a much smaller rig so in a couple of weeks we we're picking up a 40 foot Winnebago Forza it's a 38d uh, diesel pusher and um, we, we weren't planning on going that big but a couple of years Winnebago came to our RV entrepreneur summit and so there's a couple of reasons why we end up going with this rig one I'm kind of nerding out and excited about driving a diesel rig because I drove a class a gas over the mountains and uh, you know, for many years, and that wasn't really fun. So I've always liked the idea of having a diesel rig for a little period of time. And the other reason why was because Winnebago, they came to our summit, our conference that we hosted a couple years ago for people who work on the road, and they interviewed people over the weekend. And we were basically like, hey, we've probably got one of the biggest gatherings of people who are running a business or working remotely from their RV. So why don't you take advantage of that and interview people about what they would really want in a desk space and set up. And so we booked out slots all over the weekend and basically they did one-on-one -on -one chats with all of, a lot of our attendees and our attendees were really excited to give feedback and the, their product managers were really excited to take some of these ideas back. And they went back up to Forest City and a few months later we were at their rally and they said, Heath and Alyssa come over to you know our warehouse or whatever manufacturing area and we're going to show you some of the things that came out of that. And they basically had all these desk prototypes that all came from feedback from our attendees. Long story short, for the first time they they removed uh, the bunk beds and they created a floor plan specifically with a dual desk in this particular unit. So it's got not just like a little area of like an afterthought desk, but actually a desk space for both Alyssa and I. And, uh, and they put it in this 38D. And so while we may have not went this big just on our own accord, uh, because it had this really cool desk and it was a tie-in for, for them coming to our conference, we were like, you know what, this is going to be why not? It'll be fun. So that's that's kind of the backstory that you didn't ask for about why we're getting this rig. <laughs> well, it's it's good. And, and let me, let's talk about that. Traveling with an infant, uh, you do need more room. And many of the smaller RVs uh, are limited in seat belts. And if you travel with an infant, that infant needs to be in a car seat. For sure. Which, which means you have to have a seat belt. And then that means your third passenger doesn't have one. Uh, so there's, there is a challenge. I can see that for RV manufacturers to be aware of this and to, and to design even the smaller class C's and class B's with the idea that you're going to need to have some more. Uh, yeah, if, you're, really if, like, if you're listening, Mike Elias, uh, we need some leisure travel vans that have good rear facing. Yeah, seats. yeah. I hope Mike <laughs> listens to this. I don't know if he listens to the podcast, but yes, Mike, you do. And, uh, uh although, you know, we, we have a, uh, a, a unity and we love it. But we really like that wonder that we tried out too, and we love that Ford. <coughs> so who knows? Maybe we can try. Yeah. But I, but the other thing, and uh, for those who are young people or people who travel in the event, you you are going to have to have a job or have a way to generate income. Most of you, ninety nine percent, as you're out there, and having workspace is another big issue for so many RV manufacturers. So I, I hats off to Winnebago for that, and. Uh, I look forward to seeing that, that new one of yours at your summit. You talked about the summit that Winnebago came, uh, and you mentioned early on that you are one of many, many, many uh, young families who travel with infants and very young children. So talk to us about this summit, and who is that for? Is it just for young families? What happens at that summit? Uh, and, and give us an idea who's going to be there. You're going to be there. Jennifer's going to be there. Yeah, so that's, we, will, that's we will. We're really excited about it, actually. So basically, a few years ago, I, well, I guess kind of restart and give you the high level overview is that Alyssa and I started traveling in 2014. And that first year on the road, it was kind of like a lot of people who decided to go out and travel. Maybe not everybody's story, but I've definitely heard this narrative a few times, which is I've saved up. I'm going to go travel the country for a year and then I'll maybe go back to my life. But then you realize this is really fun, and this if is you my have, life. This is yeah, my life. exactly. And um, and if you have skills that you can translate into, you know, profit or or things that people will pay for, then maybe you can continue making that life, making that your forever life kind of thing. And for us, we were learning video. My wife is a great writer, and we both went to school for business communications and a mixture of that. And so after that first year of traveling, we, were, uh, we had built up skills in video production. It took us nine months from like learning no video to getting our first paid client for like a half day shoot. It was like a thousand bucks, which for us was like huge to be able to, we kind of realized like we can make money outside of, uh, you know, our typical hourly rate for what we were making in our first jobs out of college. And so we started meeting other people who were trying to figure this out and make an income in life for themselves. 
And so I started the podcast, The RV Entrepreneur, which you've been a guest on, and basically just tried to share stories of how other people were making this lifestyle work. And we also started a Facebook group at the time, which you've done. We actually have a lot of similarities, Mike, even, you know, even though we've had different career paths. So there's a Facebook group, The RV Entrepreneur, and the podcast. And basically, over the past few years, this has been a place where we've tried to like bring together a community of people to share resources and learnings around how they've made this lifestyle work because there's a million different paths. Like, and there's no one path, but you know, like it's a crazy idea when you first think about it and you tell your family and you tell your friends. And so to be able to land in a place where it doesn't seem as crazy is really meaningful, uh, where it kind of seems like it's a normal thing. Now, most of our friend, really good friends that we know have started some type of business that allows them to travel full time. And it's totally normal. But if I go to, you know, in most scenarios, people would think that's nuts. They so our first year after doing the podcast uh, for like a year, we decided like, let's try to bring together this group of people in person. And um, I was like, if we can get like 30 people there, that'd be really cool. We didn't know what it would be. We didn't really know the format. But we ended up having 120 people come. And then the next year, 250. Last year, 350. This will be our fourth year. And uh, we don't want to grow too much bigger than last year because then it kind of gets a bit more manageable. And my wife and I do a lot of other things outside of this conference. But essentially, it's, it's become a business conference for people who happen to live in RVs. So it's about 60 to, it's about 70, 60, 70 percent of people who are already out on the road or part timing in some capacity. Some people are still making the transition. Um, age does not matter whatsoever. Uh, it's, we have people who are 20, people who are in their 70s. And it's basically... I think more of a mentality thing. Like some people are just getting started in their career and they're trying to figure it out. Some people have been running a business in person for a while. We have a couple of folks who like have physical businesses in different parts of the country, but they're navigating and want to be around community of entrepreneurs who are building other things because now they're out on the road with their family. And then we've got people who are maybe at retirement age or a little bit later even who are trying to figure out like what can, how can I now spend my time doing what I want to do and if I can make a few bucks from it, cool. So I think it's about bringing together that community and over the weekend we have workshops, main stage talks and it's really all centered more like a business conference than it is any type of rally. So we have like legit business spaces and everything is like we don't have a lot, we don't really have any RV specific like workshops or things like that because I, the way we see it, it's like you can kind of go to any rally and learn about solar or something like that. So we try to really hone in on the business side of things, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it does. Uh, and, I, and I like the fact that you have it for all sorts of different uh, people in different stages of living this RV lifestyle. Um, the, um, whether you, you have a young family and an infant, uh, whether you're just a, a couple or whether you're a solo traveler, or whether you are in uh, facing your retirement and wondering, I don't want to be bored. How can I find fun and adventure? This is the kind of thing where you gather together and you learn all sorts of stuff uh, from others. And I think uh, probably the benefit of a gathering like this is you guys are camped. Uh, this was what drew us there at, on a gorgeous state park, the largest lake in Alabama. And it's in March 2020. Uh, and uh, the weather will be pretty good up there about then. Um, why don't you, uh, we'll put links in it on the show notes to uh, this conference and all of that stuff. But going right back to our, our topic about traveling with infants, um, I would gather as you work with this community, how many young families do you think are out there full-timing uh, or almost full-timing in an RV and learning, earning their living on the road as they raise up these kids? I would assume all of them who are traveling with their families are earning their income on the road. But uh, our, it's our funny because our first couple of years of hosting the summit, there were quite a few families who came, but nobody really brought their kids. Like they, some of the families who came actually had parents in the area or brought them in and they like hung out with the kids. And so we just didn't see kids around at all. And then last year, it was like an explosion of families with kids. And just some of them were mega families, families with you know six, seven, eight kids. And, and there were so many. And at one point we were walking around the campground and these kids had formed like their own collective uh, company essentially. And they were picking up sticks around the campground and then reselling them to attendees. They're like, this is, this is, I, this is yeah. Yeah. I'm sure this is illegal in the state park, but I love their, you know, yeah. their drive here. This is amazing. And so long story short, and we become good friends with uh, with Jill Dinkins and Dustin Dinkins, who who bought full time families last year. Now they have partners, uh, Dustin and Nicole, uh, and I know that their membership has has soared and they're 
I don't know the numbers, but it seems like there are a lot more families who are out on the road doing this and making this lifestyle work. And I give a shout out to full-time families because they're like doing a really good job of bringing communities together to you know be in person and connect. And so the kids can have people to play with. I'm sure that would be my biggest concern if I was taking Ellie out on the road when she's 10 years old or something like that is, you know, I want her to have friends. I want her to socialize. And, you know, so many of these families, like they travel together and they probably get as much, if not more time you know, being in their RV and going to these types of rallies and meetups than maybe they would even in person. And they're also getting really cool life experiences too. So it seems like there are, are a lot, maybe more than there have ever been because of technology and being able to see them on social media and things like that. But it seems like quite a bit. Yep. So one of the challenges that you will have to make with Ellie is, uh, uh, while she's only six months old, six years comes very quickly. And <laughs> so she's going to need schooling. And many people are doing what we call road schooling. Full-time families can help with that. That's one decision. Another question people would ask about traveling with an infant is uh, uh, doctor appointments, uh, the pediatrician. Uh, how are you going to handle that on the road? So the first part about road schooling is a problem for future Heath and Alyssa. <laughs> We're just deferring trust that. Me, trust me, Heath, six years is going to come very quickly. Very I know, I know. Like, what happened? He was right. Yeah. It's, it's weird though, because it's one of those things where like we, we know we want to give her a great education. But as far as like the specifics around that, our lives have changed so dramatically in various times. Like this year we're going, we're hitting the road with the sole goal of like buying a piece of property in a campground in a particular place, which we don't know where it's going to be yet. So it's one of those things where if we you end want up to in build a, place, a campground or, or buy one and make it. Uh, 2020, okay. like we're hitting the road with that sole purpose this year. That's why we're getting back on the road. That's a whole nother story, I guess, but yeah. I didn't know. If, I guess I didn't tell you that. Um, so I, that's I did the, it from watching one of your uh, okay. blog reports, but, but yeah, we could talk for two hours. about. So all it kind of depends where we land. Like, are the school systems really good? Are we still like having a great time traveling? Is she still enjoying it? Is there, you know, if she's into things like, uh, you know, music lessons or dance and that we are in one place already, maybe it makes sense to put her in a school. I don't like, I'm totally open to, to what happens in our lives over the next few years. So I'm not, it's not really a big concern for me. We'll figure it out. She'll be fine. <laughs> as far as like the doctor's appointments go, we're still here and she's passed six months now. So she's had a lot of her big checkups. And so after this, they get further and further in between. So whenever it's time for like, I don't know if it's six months after this time at one year or whatever, we have a whole schedule at home. We can just come swing back through North Texas where our pediatrician is. And we've also got them on speed dial if we need them or anything like that. So I was more concerned about being in Italy where I don't speak the language and, you know, hosp hospitals are very different. So that was more of a concern for me, like traveling around the U.S. and like there's hospitals everywhere. People speak the language. Like I'm that's, not that's what we found. But that's one of the big questions, particularly people with, with kids as they travel. They worry about that. And, and it's good to adjust that because it's not a big sure. fine care. And what many RVers do is uh, like Jennifer and I, we're home for uh, through Christmas through um, through uh, December through Christmas or Thanksgiving through Christmas and a little bit in the new year. So we schedule all of our annual appointments when we're back at our Michigan home. We don't have to worry about them on the road. And then we carry all those records. So uh, you'll be doing that. I mean, sure. Taking, taking Ellie stuff. Uh, all right. Well, we'll give a shout out to all those people. Uh, tell everybody, Heath, how they can follow you and Alyssa. And Alyssa, I know would be with us this morning, but she's got a young six month old baby. She did, want, she did want to be on. When we had this originally scheduled at noon, she was all in and then we <laughs> scheduled at 8 a.m. and she's like, I'm not going to make it. Yeah, I go <laughs> blame her. It's, it's early. Uh, so how does, what's the best way for people to, uh, to follow you guys? I know you've got so many irons in the fire, but uh, what's, what's the, the single best way that they can connect with all the things you do? Yeah, heathandalyssa.com is kind of the hub for everything. And then the rventrepreneur.com is for the conference specifically. So either of those would be great. All right, last question is... Um, uh, speak to those who are like you, uh, uh, young, starting off with a family, uh, want to see the world, but uh, are still a little, you know, they're, they're, one foot is still like, oh, I got to stay in a traditional, uh, uh, you know, nine to five and security. <laughs> Talk about that. Yeah, I would say, obviously, you need to take care of your family, first and foremost, like be a responsible adult and things like that. But I think for the way I see it is like part of my responsibility is doing my best for us to live a life that makes us excited and happy and to be that example for Ellie and not make decisions based on fear. So I would say that if you're making the decision because you have to make money, then you obviously need to provide for your family first and foremost. Like I'm not trying to promote throw caution to the wind, especially now that you have a kid or something like that. But I think that 
you know, for her to be able to see us out traveling and going on hikes and doing the things that make us really excited and happy, I think is going to be really good for her versus me making, you know, 50 to a hundred thousand more if I was in a traditional job. So to me, that's like an easy decision. Well, Heath Padgett, uh, give our best to Alyssa. Jennifer and I look forward to uh, being with you and uh, we'll be at the, uh, at the summit and we'll be kind of addressing people who, you know, are, uh, are wondering how they do this and talking about technology and working from the road and finding fun and freedom out there. And uh, that's the one thing that no matter what age the RV lifestyle offers everybody is fun, freedom, adventure, and community. And uh, I'm glad to be part of your community. Heath. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Again, thanks so much to Heath Paget for taking time to share what it's like traveling in an RV with an infant. Uh, we'll have uh, links to everything we talked about from the, the book, The Morning Miracle, to the RV Summit that Heath talked about, and to uh, lots of pictures of uh, Heath and Alyssa and their RVs, and, uh, and of course, baby Ellie. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Would you please do us a favor and subscribe to all of our RV videos. We have videos that come out every week on every aspect of the RV lifestyle. Lots of on the road traveling videos of our trips and our adventures, uh, how to videos, tours of different RVs. And the best way for you to stay connected is to subscribe and then to click that little notification bell. Right now, I'm going to suggest that you head over to uh, one of our videos. Just follow the arrow and uh, keep watching to learn more about the RV lifestyle. I'm Mike. Thanks for watching.